All right. This video uh, is a generation of nothing. I just seen the title. I'm saying it has something to do with the PS5 and a Series X. I want to know what he talk. I want to know what he on. If he says a generation of nothing, and uh, it's by the uh, NC Smash Smaster Smaster is that a T? Oh, the NCS Master. Okay. All right. Let's uh. Let's see what your boy talking about. Ever see a topic pop up in discussion online and it just spins off so wildly you can't help but feel the need to speak on it? Yes? No? Well, either way, that's what I'm doing here. If you've been perusing gaming social media circles the past week and change, particularly Twitter, you'll have seen a major rise in the speculation around the Switch 2. And it makes sense as to why. The OG Nintendo Switch turns 7 in less than 2 months, which by most metrics means the console's life is coming to a close, and soon we'll be preparing for the successor. As a result, plenty of rampant rumors have sprung up across the internet. People been people want a people been want a new Switch for so long, but Nintendo, hey man, they going they going they keeping it pushing. I just hope the Switch 2 has an OLED screen because I didn't buy the Switch OLED, but I want to get into OLED and stuff. People be talking, people be going crazy about OLED this, OLED that. But you know, I don't know. And as much as the OLED screen will be dope, like I still didn't get the uh. Steam Deck OLED, I probably will get one eventually, but shit, like, I don't know. Like, I'm just old school, like, I be chilling like the tech. If it do what it, if it do what I wanted to do, I'm good. But the Switch, you can definitely tell it's outdated. Uh, what up with your talk? I appreciate you chatting. What's up, man? Um, I'm just reacting to videos, by the way. Uh, and this is, uh, missed my intro i don't know if you've seen it but it's a generation of nothing i wanted to see uh i haven't seen the video so i'm just reacting to it live you know what i'm saying but uh yeah people been talking about a switch too but and what they want from a switch too i don't think they're gonna get it that's one of the reasons why the steam deck has been selling so well like especially like people who uh emulate I don't emulate Switch games because I have a Switch, but like people like that's been playing like the Zelda games on the Switch, bro. Like this, this, this Steam, the Switch is holding back a lot of games, and like those games run flawless on the Steam Deck. But will Nintendo make a powerful handheld like that? Well, I don't think so. I don't know. They may do it. That now that they see it's worth it, but Nintendo's so stuck in their ways, bro. Like I just don't see them. I don't see them like doing like making a, a switch to as powerful as, i don't even see them using an oled switch for the switch to not day one they like to uh use that shit for um a reason to upgrade like the switch to oled you know what i'm saying they got a new switch coming out yeah they they saying that um they're letting a lot of like switch games come out like the last little bit of like um exclusive like they wanted zelda to get out and i forgot what's the other uh switch game that they wanted to push and now uh, pokemon had its last dlc and you know they're gonna uh they're gonna start talking about it coming this summer they wanted like the they wanted to get a, get christmas and stuff over with in the fiscal year and shit and then valentine's day like uh a lot of switches sell for valentine's day because people buy their significant others that stuff that especially people who travel and like move around like me like i got a lot of handhelds and stuff so but uh let's watch this video i don't talk t through the intro long enough whether legit or total bullshit we have no idea most claiming to know the switch 2's battery life ram internal storage release date internal components the works Again, whether any of these are actually true, we won't know until Nintendo themselves reveal it. But all of these interweaving rumors and leaks have come. I believe it's true, simply because, like, I don't, I don't, I'm not saying it's true because how old the Switch is. I think it's true just because this the longest Nintendo has went without, a, like, releasing something. Like, yeah, they, they didn't release, like, different generations, like the Switch Lite, you know, and the OLED Switch. But, like, generation-wise, like, they don't go this long without releasing like hardware like what was the biggest gap between the snes and the nintendo 64 i think i think nintendo's scared because 
their track record for the past 20 years have been on and off. Like, if you look at the GameCube, the GameCube didn't sell well, but the Wii did. The Wii U didn't sell well, but the Switch did. You know what I'm saying? And I think that, like, they got so used to their gimmicks selling something versus, like, actually putting in the work to make a, a, a great console that they don't even know what to do let alone their marketing stuff sucks like their marketing shit sucked between the um especially for the wii u like they just marketed the tablet and so when i worked at gamestop and like you got those parents and stuff coming in thinking like they just need the tablet no baby it's a whole new system you need to get when they marketed the gamecube it was just like the kitty console they didn't let third party companies port their games over and then they chose that mini disc and a lot of people like they they they, they, they like nintendo was stuck in their ways like no they're gonna come to us and nobody came to them on playstation 2 was fucking phenomenal especially with the dvd format like you could just hold more data and then like playstation had like third party support on the lock and then when the xbox came out it was basically pc parts so like there are if their game was already getting ported to pc is it was so easy to port it to xbox and then on top of that sega basically gave the olive branch to fucking microsoft and gave them their blessing they basically passed the torch from uh sega to microsoft so everybody who was on the dreamcast jumped ship to the uh xbox mm -hmm. and they ported like yeah playstation got um a lot of sega games like they got like the sonics and stuff but like all the like classic like shinmu and fucking uh sega gt and like all the sports games all that shit went to fucking xbox bro and that's another thing i want to make a video on i want to make a video on, on how sega how the how the microsoft is the sega console uh how, how microsoft inherited this sega's uh legacy you know what i'm saying like i think that'll be a dope video topic what you say like you said it's gonna have more power to run top games or are they gonna be stuck in their ways? That's what I'm saying, bro. And like me, I don't watch I don't watch Nintendo. I'm not a Nintendo kid. Only reason I buy Nintendo shit was because of Pokemon. Like dead ass. Like all like I had friends who were Nintendo kids. But for me, like I bought so like my favorite generation is generation six. PS2, GameCube, Xbox, uh, even the Dreamcast. I like the Dreamcast. Like my cousins had Dreamcast. Um, I'm starting like my retro journey. Like I, I've been on my retro shit. Like my PS2 collection is through the roof. But uh, came last year. Like I bought another GameCube. Like I had a GameCube because I wanted to play XD Girl of Darkness when I was little. I ended up playing Need for Speed Underground on it. You know what I'm saying? I don't even remember what happened to my old school GameCube. I wanna, I gotta, I gotta find that bitch. I just bought a new one. But anyway, um, I only got an Xbox for Halo. My friend gave me an Xbox because he got a 360, so he gave me his OG Xbox played the fuck out of halo um what else and then even on my gamecube i played all my fucking pokemon games on the Game Boy player you know what i'm saying like i was a sony kid through and through it's just it's like with nintendo it's either a gimmick or they actually like put the time into the console but if you look at nintendo the only time they actually took time to do some correct was with their handhelds and so if you look at like the game boy line they never faltered with the game boy line they did not falter with the ds granted the 3ds was a gimmick too but after a while it was like nobody cared about the 3ds but it was still powerful as hell for a handheld even though the psp and the ps vita was way more powerful but nintendo just got brand recognition nintendo like like it or love it nintendo got the same brand recognition as like apple does like when people when you pull out anything that has buttons bro like when i'm in my doctor's office bro everybody thinks this is just like a big ass switch like i don't even call this a steam deck uh, granted like people who uh gamers and stuff like me and you we know this is a steam deck but when i'm at a doctor's office bro they just think this is a game boy that's that's, that's all that, that's all people call it you know what I'm saying? There's everywhere you go. It's a Game Boy or a Switch. Like, the people who call it a Switch, the only reason they know what the Switch is is because of their kids. You know what I'm saying? Or their boyfriend. You know, or their brother. You know what I'm saying? Like, 
like handhelds, no matter what it is, is a it's a Switch or a Game Boy. And so, even though the Switch is a handheld, it's their home console line too. But it's just like the Switch was a gimmick. It just worked, and it's what people it's what people didn't know they wanted. They wanted to be able to take their games and stuff with them. Like that's why the GameCube had their handle. They wanted you to take your GameCube to your friend's house and stuff like that. So it's just like, are they going to fuck this up and just use like an older chip again? Like the Switch was so outdated when it first came out. It was just stationary, and um, game developers just like worked with what they had. But, but the switch was the first thing when it first came out like you get what i'm saying like the switch was the first to do this this is 2024 we have the steam deck we got the ionia we got the um what's that damn um uh, ace the rog ally we got the we got so many gaming handhelds now it's just like yeah we can play nintendo games on those and yeah like i'm gonna get it because i'm a pokemon fan and I and I go to tournaments, tournaments and stuff, and I want to play P Pokemon it, like legitly. Like I don't, I uh, I I, I uh, play, I I play my ROM of older Pokemon games on my Steam Deck. But anything now, like I still play my Switch when I want to get in tournaments and stuff. And it's just like, is Nintendo gonna like make something to compete with the Steam Deck and all of that, or are they gonna be like, this is my lane, like? I don't care what y'all are doing. We're not trying to be a PC and stuff. We're going to just make a little bit powerful. Uh, we're going to use the same like chip. Just the. Okay. So what they use. They use the 2012 um, NVIDIA phone chip. I forgot what it was called. Are they just going to get like the 2016 version of the chip. Or the 2017 version. And still be outdated when it comes out are they going to actually get something that's like of today's technology so where because games now like you're not going to see games like um gta 6 come on the switch too if they do that like is is what you say nintendo has gone mobile in my opinion and has always been mobile for years as long as they got mario they not going out of style yeah you're right but so many people now today nowadays they emulate that stuff like people who bought a steam deck like i know so many dudes they had a switch and bought a steam deck and they don't even play their switch no more they literally got their switch hooked up to the computer so they can make um rom iso files of their switch games and play it on their steam deck my friend he has the rg ally camera froze oh shit my friend he has the rg ally right and so he modded his switch to where it can rip the uh, game card. Like he could put the game card in here, and it'll rip from the USB C to the computer and make it a game file. And he puts it on his RG Ally, and all his switch games are on his RG Ally now. And it's just like I did that stuff with my Wii U games, but I'm not doing that for my uh switch games i don't know it's just like i still want to play like you know this because like, i like playing my switch games online like pokemon and monster hunter even though i'm gonna get monster hunter on pc so i can play it on my steam deck but it's just like he just ever since he got his rg ally he doesn't even touch his switch og shit that's crazy no for real that's what i'm saying bro like like he doesn't even Oh, you talking about like like having the OG switch is crazy? No, nah, I bought the real one. Like I had the uh I had the black one and then I had got the Pokemon Switch Lite. And then uh I got the Mario Switch just cuz it was red. And I f red is my favorite color. We used to say, I remember we used to burn OG Xbox games. Exactly. My cousin used to burn uh Dreamcast games and it's just like once people get something more powerful they still want to experience those games like me like i'm i'm getting to like so i'm 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 getting a hard drive so i can play my um ps2 games off the hard drive so i don't uh run the disk drive and like you know 
like basically break my PlayStation 2. And I like to keep my disc pristine. And I'm so used to today's technology of like wanting to just have all my games on a hard drive, play it, and then like just keep my collection on the shelf and make it look good to where when I'm streaming, I'm going to play on my systems. But I got my PS2 games on my um, Steam Deck. Like, I've been playing, and, like, here here in a minute, like, after I get done reacting to videos, like, I'm playing Chrono Trigger. I got the PC version, but I'm playing Chrono Trigger on my Steam Deck, and I'm finna start Final Fantasy VI on my Steam Deck, and it's just like, bruh. Um, I hope I'm not stopping your content. Do keep going, bro. Oh, no, you're fine, bro. Like, this is how, I'm, uh, you know, it's just good for the video or whatever. Uh, but, yeah, like, I, I'm using, uh... I, I play a lot of my ISOs and stuff on my Steam Deck, so I uh I just wish uh Nintendo will make a power. I want them to compete. Like I don't want them to get stuck in their ways and just think that Mario and Zelda are gonna keep selling them because we're we're getting in a time where now people don't care about that. People don't care about they don't care about like you know being scared of Nintendo no more. They're they're ripping these games, and a lot of people not even buying the games. Hell, they lucky my friend still buys the games. There's so many ways of getting that shit now. You know what I'm saying? Like, bro, they need to. I don't know. I don't know, bro. Like Nintendo, it's just up in the air. Needed in one prevailing consensus, and it's that the Switch 2 will be about as powerful as the PlayStation 4. And of course, when that little nugget got planted in everyone's heads, the Twitter space absolutely ran away with it. That console's 10 years old! How is Nintendo so incapable of standards? This will never compete with the modern systems. And it was that last point in particular that really got me thinking. The idea that because the Switch 2 will be noticeably weaker than the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X, it no, nah, I think uh, I think a lot of people is more into modern life, and then modern has gotten so much easier. Like, take the Steam Deck, like, bro, you can download RetroArch on um, Steam and install it all with the press of a button. And then, if you know how to work a USB file, copy like a file from the computer to your uh, USB, like so many people now are learning that and how easy that is to do, bro is way more than just like our niche group of gamers you know what i'm saying like and then like you got to look at like a these little handhelds like on amazon like people people are yearning for like the nostalgia and the old ways of games like just excuse me just playing like old games again and that's another thing that's hurting nintendo like the the streaming like the what is it the um the uh What's the little marketplace thing they got? The uh playing like the little retro games, like they just picking and choosing their favorites. But it's so many games just on the Game Boy Vans and Game Boy Color and 3DS that are just stuck on those systems, but you can like play those now on modern hardware even better. Like like I like I got a um modded Game Boy Vans coming in and it's like even though I got the Steam Deck, the Steam Deck is still big to carry. And, like, sometimes, like, when I'm walking out the door going to my girl house, I just want to, like, take something to, like, you know, whip out, like, at the restaurant or something. You know what I'm saying? I'm, uh, I can just play my Game Boy Advance stuff. But now they got cartridges where you can put an SD card slot in there and how you're wrong with you. You two is becoming the equivalent of school. Yeah, bro, so many people are learning so many ways to do stuff on youtube because we're getting to where a lot of people like your phone like especially android phones and that's what's really started the wave like picture people who like work at office jobs and stuff and they want to like they want to go back to like playing like where they they were kids that had game boy vans and game boys and stuff they want to have that again and nintendo's not making it to where like you could play golden sun on your uh switch you probably can play golden sun now like now that i don't mention it but for the longest you couldn't play golden sun but golden sun you can play it on your steam deck you know what i'm saying so it's just like not only nintendo and then like they want you to like get into their subscription service of the switch online and it's just like those subscription service are like money pits like 
look at Microsoft. They're losing money for every time they put a game on Game Pass. And people don't know that. They think it's the best thing for gaming. But that's why PlayStation hasn't done that stuff. Like, PlayStation put older games and stuff that's already sold or whatnot on their subscription service. But nobody wants to make a game. That's only good for, like, indies and stuff. But you're losing money when Nintendo already had a service on the Wii and Wii U where you can download classic games. And those classic games are stuck on the Wii and Wii U. Like, bro, like, they should have made it to where, like, the Switch could already access those stores. And that's one thing that I give PlayStation uh, credit for. They're slowly integrating the PS3 store to the PS4 and PS5 store to where, like, all my games that I had, like, on PlayStation Plus or, like, that I bought on, like, on my PS3 uh, that were PS1 games and stuff, they're slowly coming to the PS5. Like, I got Legend of Dragoon on my PS5 now. Like, I got, like, a lot of my uh, PS2 games. They're not, um, if they upgraded and stuff, they're on the PS5 now. Like, it's just crazy that they're doing that. They don't even have multiplayer 007, which could be a hit. I think they just made it uh, 007 multiplayer, but it still don't play right. Like, it's still, like, it's messed up. And that's, like, and that goes to say, like, it's just little stuff. Like, they'll put some on there, and it's still fucked up. Like, I remember people saying, like, let, uh, Kirby was emulated weird and it couldn't be played right. It's just it won't be crazy. able to compare and thus will flop. Never mind how much this ignores the history of console success and how power often has very little to do with dominating the market. Never mind the fact that Switch One was already an underpowered system in its own right and went on to become the best selling video. What I say. Everything you said, I just did. <laughs> game system of the past 15 to 20 years. But biggest of all, never mind the fact that the Switch 2 just needs to have a decent game lineup within its first one or two years of its life, and it will already be on solid ground compared to its contemporaries. Because in truth, despite the past couple minutes saying otherwise, this video is not about the Switch 2. We don't have enough concrete information on it, and I don't think it's worth delving deeper into it until we have some. But rather, it's about the consoles the system will be competing with on the market. And how even despite its likely weaker status, I believe it will have no issue staking claim in the gaming landscape. Because it ain't th I don't know about that. I don't know about that, my boy. ...that hard when the rest of that landscape is a barren fucking wasteland. This dude must not play a lot of games. Or he must not think a lot of games are good. But he's like, facts, did you help this guy make this video? <laughs> no. <laughs> nah, bro. I literally seen the title. And I was like, oh, let me react to that on stream. <laughs> but him saying a gener like, that's why I, like, put it on the stream list. Because he said it's a generation or nothing. And he's saying the Switch 2 can't compete. Like, don't have anything to go against. Bro, has he not played Spider-Man? Has he not played, uh, Horizon? Has he not played God of War? Like, bro, like, it's so many games. And then on top of that, PlayStation is getting they indie bag too and they have a lot of stuff bro this nigga don't play games and then like xbox has fucking starfield excuse me granted a lot of xbox xbox to ruin their shit because everything's going to pc but they got starfield they got uh halo gears they just they got forza what's the other game they got a lot of fucking um stuff like uh what's the damn the damn music game that just came out from uh arcane and shit like that now i do <laughs> want to preface right off the bat as a larger collective whole the ninth generation has been far from a failure or even truly a disappointment i know many are going to label me a fanboy for making this video and thus should make it clear this video isn't meant to just blindly rip on playstation and xbox this is more me getting a lot of gripes I've had with this specific generation off my Okay, he just cleared his stuff because I just said all of that. Chest and how poorly I believe it's been laid out. When looked at as an entire front, there have been some very damn good titles these past three years and change during the ninth generation's earlier days. God of War Ragnarok, Tales of Arise, Hi-Fi Rush, Resident Evil Force. That's the name of the game. High Fi Rush. I couldn't Scarlet think of Nexus, it. Nexus, Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, Alan Wake 2, Lies of P, Armored Core 6, Elden Ring. There's been no lack of high quality titles to play overall. 
However, that's when you're talking about the entire gaming atmosphere as a complete unit. When you boil it down to the individual consoles of this generation and what they have to offer a value towards themselves specifically, good luck rummaging through those scraps. You just name a shit ton of exclusives that was just on PlayStation. Ratchet and Clank, Get God of War, um, Final Fantasy, all that was just on PlayStation. I can make this work. The ninth generation has become synonymous with two things, having legitimately impressive load times that make them near non-existent, and having exclusive libraries that are just as non-existent. You don't have to look far to see how many jokes there are thrown around about these consoles' exclusive lineups. PS5 has no games has existed as a meme for multiple years now and doesn't appear to be slowing down. And Xbox? They don't even get the privilege of having a joke because barely anyone even expected anything out of them. How, why, why is that a thing still? Why do people still think that the PS5 has no games? Where are you coming from? Now, console exclusives as a topic have become admittedly divisive in recent years. Many have begun to argue that they're anti-consumer and it's best for everyone if all games were made available everywhere. While that is true in- No, we're just in a generation of people who are entitled and don't understand like why would every game be on every system would it be the point of buying a playstation now and would it be the point of, and hey that's that's the whole that's the whole direction xbox is going to like i guarantee you if the, if if the rumors is true and they're finna make an xbox series x with no excuse me with no disc slot no disc drive xbox won't be here any, any longer like xbox is going they're trying to push this all digital shit and nobody wants that like more and more people are starting to buy physical again especially like classic physical games that xbox is finna like i don't know why the infatuation just all digital bro like yes it's cool to like get stuff instant but we're seeing now the detriments of all digital everything all these stores that shut down and you don't have the rights to and like even steam like certain games had to get pulled and taken out of your library with uh all digital or when stuff loses the rights to but you know what you get to keep a disc so it's just like xbox gotta chill out at least sony still give you the option even with the slim they made it to where like the new uh playstation slim the disc drive is like you can unplug it and stuff and just put the different cover on it but uh, I still don't know what my boy talking about like I, I hate that whole notion of like every game like I why would Halo be on PlayStation that's that's crazy it's always logical to buy this that bro exactly like yes it's cool like so me like I'm a collector like a lot of times like I'll buy the game digital just to have it digital but like I still like my Kingdom Hearts and Final Fantasy I have every Final Fantasy physical I haven't bought the new uh, Pixel Remaster yet, but I had the Pixel Remaster on Steam. But, like, I got every Final Fantasy on physical. And then I have them all digital on, uh, on my PS Vita. And now I have them all digital on my Steam account be just because, like, it's easier to get on my Steam Deck instead of my PS Vita. And, like, I still got my PS4 copies of, like, the remasters and stuff. Like, even the collector's uh, edition of all of those. But it's just, like... If they was to come out and be like, you can't play these games anymore, which I don't see that happening, but like I still have the Final Fantasy XI disc, <laughs> the Final Fantasy XI for the MMO, the disc to that, I still have that just because if they just, you know what I'm saying, anything can happen, bro, like it's just, I don't see why, and, and, and Netflix and all that stuff have gotten people to too used to that but like you don't own none of that stuff you don't own that content and so like uh, i can go on and on for it in a sense it doesn't take into account the whole picture here's the thing if all games were made available everywhere there'd be no point in having three different boxes to play them on plus the pc exactly i have multiple consoles when there's no justifiable reason to maybe i've been stopping the video and ranting too much because he's saying everything i'm saying <laughs> own them on the aspect of their games. The fact is, console exclusives are what define each system, generation, and era of gaming at the time. 
SNES versus Genesis had their biggest titles pitted against each other constantly. The PS1 took advantage over the... I know people hate uh, console wars, but that's literally the point. Like, Sony didn't get to where they at because they was nice with Nintendo. Nintendo stabbed the motherfuckers in the back, and they was like, you know what? Fuck you. I'm finna get you back, and I'm gonna take all your third-party support. And they made the PlayStation, and they made it to where, like, you could do whatever you want on third-party. Man, they... Because... Well, people don't know the Super Nintendo, Nintendo had to check off if the game was okay to release on uh, Super Nintendo. So they can get it okay to make the game. You put the work in to make the game, and then they still could say no. That's why, like, people are finding all these unreleased games from Nintendo, Super Nintendo, all the way up to, like, Dreamcast, uh, GameCube era of games uh, where people are put in the work of a game, make it. And Nintendo will be like, no, you can't release it. They just let they just let that shit go with the Switch. That's why the Switch online store has a plethora of fucking useless shovelware of games back like how Atari and stuff, like the whole video game crash that happened in the seventies, uh, late seventies, early eighties happened because they let third party go rampant. And when Nintendo let the Switch online store and they seen everybody had those handheld, all those fucking shovelware games of people just trying to take asset, do quick asset flips and just get something out there and it'd be trash. It's all on the Switch. It's on the Steam, but Steam kind of monitor where like that stuff isn't shown. But all of that stuff is shown because the Switch doesn't have a, a fucking algorithm to like categorize shit and stuff no you gotta scroll through everything and then if it's labeled a shooter you gotta go through everything they released or you can put it in alphabetical order and you have to go through all of it there's no like the steam the switch store is so outdated bro it's so annoying but sony literally like was like we're not gonna monitor but like make decent game and that's why the playstation did so well and that's why a lot of companies jump ship because they didn't have to have Nintendo breathing down their neck and they could release something good. And that's why PlayStation got a plethora of dope-ass games back in the day. Like, people who just... People who don't want different consoles to have exclusives are broke. I'm going to just leave it at that. Niggas broke. Like, if you broke, just say that. And if you... Because, uh, like, at the end of the day, your, your brand loyalty is going to get you... Like, you're going to be stuck. Like, I'm a Sony... I guess it's Sony Pony, whatever they say, whatever they call us. But I still buy Xbox. Like if it's a game I want, like my Series X, like I I uh I had it as my media uh unit downstairs for the longest, and then fucking uh what's that damn game uh the space game from Bethesda uh fucking Starfield came out. Starfield came out, and I was like, oh, I need to play that. Brought it back upstairs, and I've been playing my uh. Xbox more, and I bought an Elite controller because the fucking original Xbox controller is trash and nothing feels like the PS5 base controller except for the Elite controller. And I'm on my Xbox, and then my, my homie got his Xbox back, so we've been playing Halo again. And but I, I'm not gonna sit there and complain that I don't have Halo on the Xbox, I mean, Halo on the PlayStation. That's just it is what it is, like people are weird when they say that bro like that's the dumbest thing i've heard. i that's the one thing i hate when it comes to gaming and 64 by having most third party games be exclusive to it and the ps4 all but dominated the xbox one not just because of the latter's horrendous start but because it had practically no worthwhile experiences of its own while the former had plenty but now, just one generation removed from that dominance by exclusives, it feels as though neither side has learned anything or capitalized from it. Some people seem to get upset when you say the PS5 has no games, but if you're talking exclusives, it is not an exaggeration, at least as of right now. The wick Bro, when was this game? When was this video made? Am I wasting my time with this video? Six days ago? Aw, oh, hell no. Nah. He tweaking. Bro, he tweaking. Wikipedia article on this console is damning listing off its exclusives. There are 12 pure exclusives for the PlayStation 5. 12 of them. One of which being a pack and tech demo, another being a remake, two being VR, and five not even having actually released at the time of this video.
I can fit the entirety of this list in a single screenshot from my iPhone. Bear in mind, we are over three years into this generation's life cycle, and console gens usually- Is he not- is he not- is he not including the games that just got moved to PC? Because even though they just got moved to PC, those games are still exclusive. You can't play them on Xbox. Like, if, if that's his logic- Okay, but it that's still messed up because those games were on a PlayStation for years. Like the only reason Sony is starting to port games to PC is because like fans like like Crybaby Xbox fans and PC fans wanting Sony to like let that shit go and they let it go a little bit, but this like I don't understand like why he's saying it has no games because take away the PC, you still have to, you still can only play those games on PlayStation. And not everybody has the money for a PC. Only like the PC like install base, it's a lot of people who game on PC, but in the grand scheme of things, a lot of people don't necessarily play on their PC and nobody wants to like, PC is so hard to you gotta know about graphics cards and RAM and all that stuff and then like you can't just install it and play because you don't know your stuff out of date like PC is a hassle so like when you start thinking about that stuff granted like people are getting to PC more and more because of streamers and especially now that people um everybody wants to stream now so PCs and laptops are getting more into it but like that's why the steam deck is selling so well because it's a console experience you can buy pc games and just play it on on the steam deck without worrying about all that stuff like the steam deck the games will automatically check if it can run like the game at like ultra high mid or low setting and then it can make it may run some at ultra but you can go in there and turn it on low like and everything's right there granted you can do that on the pc but then you start like like the Steam Deck kind of locks you out a lot of stuff. Like um, let's take Cyberpunk. If you put install Cyberpunk on your Steam Deck, like if you try to go to ray trace and turn it on, it's just not highlighted. So like stuff on the Steam Deck isn't highlighted. Like it won't even let you access it, like a console. But on a PC, like people don't know like they stuff may be out of date. They may buy a PC off somebody. And they and it's a brand new PC, like or they may go to the store and get a brand new PC, not knowing that they got a 1660 Ti or 1560, not and thinking you know like because those cars are still selling, and they get home and install um what's a fucking game, install um <sighs> Starfield. And Starfield don't look like it did on the commercial, be and their stuff is running slow, and or like the game may, uh, or they may install Persona, and Persona thinking that their PC can run such stuff, but their RAM isn't like high enough, so their game is running slow, and they got stutters and shit like that. So it's just like, at the end of the day, consoles still give you an experience that's just plug and play, easy to go. Really last to around seven to eight years. We're fast approaching the 50% mark of this console and barely have enough exclusives in it to justify two worthwhile calendar years. Even if you bring on games that have been ported to the PC like Ratchet and Returnal that boosts the games list by what, three at most? It's insane no. to me how a company whose exclusives massively launched them over their competition last gen can barely get any out to save their lives. Although not sure if that's better or worse than a company who had their mistakes in that department laid bare and still didn't learn from them. Xbox, what are you doing? What's the big fucking deal? What the fuck are we doing out here? I ask you, what and the fuck are we doing here? You heard for the entirety of the X-Bone that your games lineup was not up to standard and was the primary reason the PS4 whipped your ass, only to completely continue this asinine trend. The PS5 may be the primary target of the no games joke, but that's only because it's worth joking about. And it at least has a scrap here and there like Spider-Man 2. The Series X a and S, scrap? so little was expected of them and they've arguably still underperformed. Again. This man said a scrap. He. 
one. This console's fourth year is now underway, and what does it have to show for it? Every game that was hyped up as a big deal for them is either still not out or has come up shockingly short. Halo Infinite had a very strong early push and people really enjoyed the campaign. Until they massively bungled the roadmap of multiplayer and people left in droves. Starfield had some notably positive reception right out of the gate. Until people really noticed Bethesda's antiquated design and opinions of that game continued to dip by the month. And Redfall? Uh, I can argue about Halo and Starfield. Granted, Halo uh, multiplayer was very lackluster, but it was fun. Like, Halo was fun to play. It's just that they was pushing that fucking loot box bullshit, and they wanted you to spend Uber's amount of money in the store for cosmetics that made no sense. Like, they was putting shaders. They was making shaders like $20 and shit in the store. Like, Halo, like... 343 and Microsoft was wildin'. Uh, Starfield, I mean, it's a Bethesda game. I don't know why people hold Bethesda to this fucking ungodly realm of, like, holy, like, matrimony. Like, all their games are buggy and, and, and low-key trash. Like, all their games are the same. All fucking Star... All Bethesda games are literally the same. Like, the, 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 the Bethesda that makes, like, the Fallout... Elder Scrolls series, like the that that branch of Bethesda, like Bethesda home, like home Bethesda, the, the people that make the games, they're bro, they they don't re-release Skyrim four times, bro. Like they're it's like they're never leaving they're never getting Skyrim out their head. Every game from here on out gonna be Skyrim with a different coat of paint. Skyrim in space, Skyrim remaster, Skyrim re remaster for the new consoles with more leaves and shit uh the next elder scrolls guarantee you they going to copy skyrim it's just going to be skyrim with two maps bro look at fucking uh fallout uh what's fallout 76 bro like uh look at fucking um let's just take fallout for example fallout 4 was just fallout new vegas reskin like to me my favorite fallout is three but everybody love fucking New Vegas for what I don't fucking know. But they just copy that game over and over again. Whatever people loved and that's whatever they seen in their little Bethesda bubble, they're going to keep copying that game. Fucking 76 ain't nothing but uh, New Vegas online. And then they release it really shitty and then they get to update it and patch it and make it better. Fucking uh, Elder Scrolls uh, online ain't nothing but skyrim online it plays just like skyrim literally just like skyrim except it's the mmo that's it bro and so like i don't know what people expected with um i don't know what people expected with starfield i legit don't see like what they was griping about the same people that played skyrim for fucking 15 years has it been that long it came out 2000 damn it's 13 years. Is it 13 years? When it come out? 2011? Yeah, it was 11, 11, 11. Over 2024, yeah, it's 13 years. That's insane. If that game almost 15 years old, and people play that game straight for 14 years. 13 years. And so they're going to do the same thing with Star uh, uh, Starfield. That's why they put so many planets and shit in there. So people can go play it forever. <laughs> And then Microsoft just wanted an exclusive so bad that they rushed this game. I feel bad for the people who created this game. And I feel bad for the people who bought this game. Because this game is trash. The less said, the better. I'll give them that they do have some games on the horizon that look promising. The Indiana Jones game is certainly intriguing, and I honestly think the more we see of Avowed, the more that's going to be one of the most unsung hits of the generation. But it should not be taking near four fucking years for us to finally get some titles that make these systems feel worth the cash. It's been made all the w Does he not know how long uh, some games take to create, especially games that's not an Unreal Engine? Like, uh, and that's why, like, people, like, you gotta get Epic uh, credit, because they done made Unreal Engine 
so universally um, accessible to where like those games can be made in like two to three years with like 40 people and it'd be a damn good game versus like these companies that like got these in-house engines that like are just so bloated with like years and years of just net code and spaghetti code running shit together to where like it's all fucked up like call of duty that shit ain't changed and i don't know how long this is the same infinity war engine from fucking i want to say call of duty 4 but in the same sense you got playstation their in-house engine that makes horizon and god of war and stuff immaculate whatever insomniac's in-house engine immaculate granted their games take a little bit longer they take their games take about four to five years to make but they're always on point it's really like xbox that be having to go back and rewrite stuff but i don't get i, I think dude that made this video is one of those dudes that like he thinks he knows it all like he thinks he knows everything about everything and he's like his um ideologies when it comes to things like it's he's the right one and you need to like get on track to you need to get on track get on par with his his track of thinking instead of like seeing things for what it is because like everything he's saying like is literally a crock of shit for real and i'm not trying to like down him because i don't know him or whatever and i don't want him to come after me but like just worse by just how much the cross-generation window has extended this go around here's the thing about cross-gen titles on the one hand it is very consumer another thing with cross-gen like did he forget fucking covid existed like these these consoles released during covid so a lot of the games that came out had to be cross-gen and a lot of stuff wasn't ready because people were transitioning from working from home like working in the studio and working from home like let's take destiny for instance and take bungie they had to transition over like a thousand employees from working in a studio in a network enclosed space to scattering them motherfuckers across the fucking city and bringing all that stuff and being able to send gigantic access at uh, assets of like data packets of data from one person to the next or from one group of people to the next group of people and everybody had to work on it at the same time that's gonna take a minute that infrastructure to be torn down and built back up anew takes a minute so like bro like you cannot falter the consoles for like having lackluster stuff at the jump on top of that a lot of stuff that was in development that was supposed to be out for uh day one had to be put on hold not really put on hold but like they had to like push it out the door in certain states like you know they had to patch it and shit like that that's why like and then like on top of that the ps4 so over 100 million units so like you would be stupid to just not sell to that console like the ps1 had games releasing all the way up to like 2003 or four like i want to say 2005 so it's just like like why was sony and then like with the xbox with the uh series s instead of sony making a playstation s they could just use the ps like the ps4 is still a capable piece of hardware like the ps4 is was built like fucking phenomenal to where like some games if it ain't got ray tracing and all that stuff it can just be port it on a ps4 and be released on the ps4 and sell it to like you can get that and then you know how many kids got ps4s for christmas and because they daddy got a ps5 or they mama got a ps5 like i don't think dude understands how the world works he lives in a bubble he lives in a bubble he lives in his mama basement and he gets all his shit from online so he thinks his like he how do he thinks how the world is it's just his little forms on reddit my boy don't experience life like me and you experience life you know what i'm saying like he don't understand life 
as a normal person perceives it. That's what I'm getting from this video. More friendly. It allows less immediately fortunate gamers to keep up with the current releases without having to rush to buy the next piece of hardware. However, the tr there's nothing wrong with that. Like, yes, there's a lot of people who like the p and then and then like, bro, like the fucking bots. You know how many bots bought PS fives immediately online? Like, I got my PS five day one, and I still had struggle. Like, um, the night the PS five came out, I was online on uh Target and Walmart. And I got mine from Target just because Target has a better infrastructure than every other site. But, like, you know how many bots bought up all that stuff instantly to where you couldn't get it? They bought, and, it like, people had accounts set up, like, you know how many PlayStations was being scalped instantly? Uh, yeah, he needs more real-life friends. He is a part of Gen, what's that? Gen PRZ? Like, you mean he's a part of Gen X or Z? yeah yeah i see i see yeah like he he doesn't live life like we live life like he doesn't go outside and smell smell air like he he thinks the world is ready and that's the thing about a lot of people nowadays like they're so used to their bubbles and what they see in their bubble like take facebook People take their life so seriously on Facebook and they think what they see on Facebook is how everybody thinks, but they don't experience it. You know what I'm saying? Like the red pill, blue pill people, like granted, yes, the dating scene is awful. We'll watch that. We'll watch those videos next. But um, those type of people don't go out and experience, you know, talking to a girl themselves like you know what i'm saying like they do everything online this dude is faulting the generation for cross generation stuff when every generation does that like you know how many games are on ps2 that i didn't even know existed on ps2 like i didn't know the godfather game was on ps2 in xbox you know what i'm saying shit like that that like the cross generation periods for games last a long ass time, especially for Sony. Like that's a known Sony thing, especially for anime developers. Like they anime developers don't fucking instantly hop to a new system because they fan base don't don't gravitate to the next system that fast. Like they take they let years and years go before. Fan prime example i bet you did not know that uh persona 5 is on ps3 a lot of people don't know that you know what i'm saying like a lot of people don't know the persona 5 dropped on a ps3 but it is it's a ps3 title that's why when you see persona it's called persona 5 royal because they re-released it on ps4 and put like new costumes and stuff in an extra uh mission and stuff Hell no, nah, you lying, Simba. I swear to God, bro. Go look it up. Look it up. I'll show you right now. Like, uh, let me pull it up on this side and show it to you. Like, Persona 5 dropped on the PS3, just like Persona 4 dropped on the PS2. Everybody think Persona 4 is a PS Vita title. No, Persona 4 dropped on the PS2, and then they ported it to PS Vita, and the PS Vita got, like, you know, the updated graphics and stuff because, um the ps vita tv and shit everybody you could play it on there but the persona 3 persona 5 was a ps3 title and persona 4 is a ps2 title Hold on, let me show you persona 5 ps3 see persona 5 uh Let's just indulge me on Amazon. See, PS3. Standard, it's the standard edition. Just blew my mind. It damn sure is a plain as day. I told you, bro. And then Persona 4 is a PS2 game. And people don't know that. Like, anime games, like, I'm a, I play a lot of anime games. And anime companies will use last-gen hardware for the longest. You may get 
you may get a next gen title uh uh, you may get a next gen title if it's like a company like Bandai or like uh, like fucking uh what's this company? Uh damn what's this company? Uh Atlas. Atlas just now getting, you know, they're getting, you know, bigger and stuff. But like a lot of their stuff, they'll drop that shit on the last gen consoles, wait a little bit to die down. Like they'll like they'll release it and then say uh ps4 is like in the hype they'll re-release persona 5 on ps4 and call it something like have like a title or something on it that's like dope and then like boom like people think it's a new title and be like oh shit and not even know fucking not even see the ps3 title because they didn't market it and stuff you just had to be a fan of the game and just follow them on some site or just know the game was going to release and that's just how they operate and so like this dude sitting here saying that cross-gen titles are not to be like they're wrong for that like every company do that especially uh sony because their consoles sell a fuck ton look at that persona 4 dropped on the ps2 and then it got ported to ps vita and now it's on psp like uh persona 3 persona 3 just got remade but that was a ps2 title but they made it for the psp they made persona 3 everybody think persona 3 is a psp title because of the portable but they made the persona 3 title for ps2 first and then they ported it the fucking uh then they ported the psp and named it uh persona uh 3 portable and that's just and that's just atlas so many more companies do that like fucking um look at this like they called it they dropped it as persona 3 and then they named it persona 3 feds with like extra dlcs and an extra fucking uh it was extra dlc and extra fucking uh like you know what i'm talking about like the storylines and shit that they uh that they do at persona games you know what i'm saying and then persona 3 portable and so because the portable was the newest fucking uh was the latest one they ported that to pc and shit first that's the version i played so when persona 3 portable came out i bought it on my steam deck because that's the version i played on my psp but like people don't know that it's a ps2 title and shit like that so like this dude sitting there getting mad at like cross-generation games companies been doing that for years like bro like when i found out uh what's the game that was on ps1 that was on ps2 and i was like ain't no fucking no remember iron man remember all the uh marvel games like for uh phase one that came out on the 360 ps3 tell me why majority of those are on ps2 bro like iron man one is on ps2 that shit blew my mind when i fucking found that out and i got the ps3 version and it's shit like that that like people don't know why because the ps2 fucking sold a fuck ton they will be dumb to like especially games that are like tailored to like kids and stuff and they know that parents and stuff like say me if i had a kid i'm instantly gonna give my kid the last generation console especially if i know the ps5 can play all my ps4 games i'm gonna give my kid my ps4 and then buy him his own copy of the games and then have my fucking and then cross generation games would i like still they still a lot of games still do this they have the cross gen bundles and you can have a ps4 copy and a ps5 copy like if you go to some games like you can have both copies like if i had a if i had a kid and gave him my ps4 if say i bought it like my, with my ex she played games i will install ghost of tsushima and now she got the ps4 copy you know what i'm saying because she had a ps4 pro and she just had my account on her profile you know what i'm saying and she had her own account but my account was like i made my i made her ps4 pro my main ps4 so every time i bought a game on my ps5 if it had a ps4 copy 
it'll show up on her stuff. The only time they didn't do that, if it was like the remaster, like Spider-Man came out on the PS4, but they had a remaster copy. PS2 or PS3 was free online. PlayStation was unbeatable for a while. No, like dead ass. Like I played Ratchet and Clank. Um, I forgot what that game was online on PS2. Like that's where Lunar Neos came from. That was like my PS2 name, and I just kept it for years. But like this dude getting upset that like this, like I don't know, bro. Like he, I don't know what he expect game companies to do. But like he don't know how business operates. You will be dumb as fuck to not let like those games companies make that money especially during covid when like you know i mean the ps4s got bought during covid because people was at home bored as fuck and they was like well i like look at how many girls got into gaming during covid and stuff and started streaming and now streaming and stuff especially like they had boyfriends and stuff playing the game and they couldn't go see them because of the fucking lockdown. But they wanted to play the game with them and, and, and started enjoying that shit. Like, think about how many TikToks you've seen of girls starting to play the game with their dude to bond with them and stuff. All that happened because of COVID. And so, another thing, like, sports games. That's another thing I was talking about. I was trying to think about sport titles. Sports titles uh, released on last generation consoles for so long bruh what do you what year do you think the last sports title came out on ps2 and then uh not to mention uh not to mention all these other like third world type companies uh not not third world type companies uh all these third world uh type you said 2007 <laughs> oh my gosh okay but that's funny that is funny oh man i'm finna i'm finna fuck you up off this uh you gotta think about how many third world countries not even third world countries just countries that sony and like sony and microsoft don't import their stuff or it's expensive to get stuff imported to or they don't release their consoles they want think about like how many consoles that like microsoft and sony even nintendo when they do world worldwide releases it's not to every country it's just like the main countries like usa europe canada australia japan china and china is just now getting systems again for the longest time they ban stuff but like south korea uh, south america doesn't get consoles like we do they like the ps3 is like online is still up and running strong in places like brazil portugal stuff like south america countries like they get a lot of shit they they still play a lot of uh consoles from two generations ago ps3 360 hell ps2 services some in some countries the last fucking sports game that dropped for PS2 was FIFA 14 and PES 2014. That's how long certain companies release shit on last generation consoles, bro. They were making this game on PS2, PS3, and PS4. Let that sink in. All because of certain countries, they especially soccer. Soccer is the biggest in South America. But because companies don't send their fucking um, products and stuff there, that's why, like, you will see, like, uh, girls and stuff on Instagram and, and shit, and they taking pictures on, like, an iPhone uh, 10 or an iPhone, uh, iPhone that came out in like, 2010. 2011 and this shit still look grainy and stuff because we in 4k and they just not getting in 1080p and stuff and they front camera still in the fucking 2000 stuff what was the last 2k release on ps2 uh i did not know let me see real quick um but yeah like those comp those countries get stuff so uh so uh 
late that they just they 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 still live off of that stuff bro and so japan knows that stuff because they love like south america i don't know what it is with like uh japan and the south america culture and stuff if you start looking at anime and like v anime video games like you see like how they like kind of like um it's kind of low-key racist how they like uh how they show off like south american countries and characters from that like jamaica and shit but they don't get a lot of stuff day one like bro like when they get the ps4 and something like it's people who are rich they got that stuff but they they families got money like they they come from money money to be able to import that stuff because like they have to pay scalper prices um the last uh 2k they dropped on PS2 was, damn, that's crazy. I didn't even know that. Fucking, uh, damn, let me find a picture for I say it. Who was on the cover? Who was on the cover of that one? Uh. Oh wow, that's insane. But that makes sense because the last 2K that dropped on PS2 was 2K12. So they stopped making two 2K stopped in 2012. And that just goes to show like sports games, they go they keep going, bro. They keep going forever, especially if it's a big install base. Like when like you gotta think about this bro the ps3 dropped in what 2006 and the ps2 dropped in 2001 they went from 2001 all the way to 2012 2k did that's insane that's crazy to think about so this dude tweaking bro like uh i don't know what what he's smoking he he on he on something different. Trade off is that it ultimately takes value away from the new hardware because what's the point of upgrading when you could still play these games on the old system? Which that point has only been further exacerbated by how little graphics and technology have advanced with each passing of the torch. Thus, several games which could have been a big boost for the new consoles like God of War, Ragnarok, and Horizon Forbidden West have that big exclusivity trump card slip through their hands. I will admit that points more up to your own interpretation on what you value. No, nah, because that don't make no sense because it's still people like me. Like, if you want to play those games on a new hardware and see the new colors and lights and all this shit, like, you're going to you're gonna wait and play it. Like, bro, like, just because it came on a last generation console, not, not going to mean, doesn't mean that people who are getting the PS5 and stuff not going to get it on the PS5 and stuff. That makes no, that logic makes no sense you but in a generation that's starving for notable system sellers it only further drives the issue home at least in my opinion all of this would be bad enough as is but what makes it feel all the more baffling is that this desolate wasteland is coming off the heels of a system that showed just how impactful a consistent release schedule is Take a look back at the Switch's first year. It's widely considered one of the greatest first years a video game console has ever had. Stop right there. Do you does this dude not know how many games were cross compatible? Like not cross compatible, like cross gen games with the Wii U. Like Mario Kart Deluxe 8 is a Wii U game. Legend of Zelda, Breath of the Wild is a Wii U game. Like this dude finna hype up, bruh. He makes no sense. He this is not only because it had system-defining bangers within the first 12 months like Breath of the Wild and Mario Odyssey. Bro, the Breath of the Wild came out on the Wii U. What are you talking about, bro? Breath of the Wild released day and day with the Wii U and the Switch, bro. And you just getting mad that... Oh, oh my God. Bro, you're getting... <laughs> oh, my God. Oh my god. But also because of one main thing, consistency. 
The Switch has been one of the most consistent consoles to grace the market, with practically every year of its life dropping at minimum three to four notable exclusives that will add value to the system and drive up reasons to own one. And I'm of the firm belief that this is one of the key contributors as to why the system has done so well. The hybrid gimmick and overall quality of the games has certainly played a factor, but the consistency of releases is one of the most underappreciated aspects of the success of the Switch. Hell, just compare the Switch to its predecessor. The Wii U's calendar was so dry every year it could be mistaken for a pile of sawdust. What was the point of owning one? This dude makes no sense. He just got upset that the PS5 had cross-generational releases with God of War and what was the other game? Like all the all the PS5 exclusives came out on the PS4, and you saying that that knocked the PS5 sales, and there was no point in getting the PS5 because those games were on the PS4. But you're praising the Switch and Nintendo for having an amazing release when the switch came out when those same games were on the wii u and they dropped on the wii u too you make that makes no sense you you he either a nintendo fanboy or he lives in a bubble or he does not understand the world you're praising you're literally praising birth of the wild but Breath of the Wild did the same thing God of War did. Breath of the Wild is on the Wii U. Breath of the Wild dropped on the Wii U. You're praising Mario Kart. Mario Kart's on the Wii U. The only game that was on the Wii U when the Switch dropped was Mario Odyssey. What's the fucking game? Super Mario, uh, what's the one that you get? Uh, Super Mario Maker, Wii U game. Fucking... Bro, what is this dude smoking? What is the every damn near every game that dropped on the Wii U, every game that dropped on the Switch, year one is on the Wii U. Bro, uh, Splatoon. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, dude. Hold on. You are knocking. Bro, Just Dance 2017 on the Wii U. Breath of the Wild on the Wii U. Skylanders on the Wii U. Super Barman Man. Is Super Barman Man on the Wii U? That, that's up for grabs. I Am Set Sooner is a fucking 3DS game. That dropped on the 3DS. Shovel Knight is a 3DS game. Bro, what is he talking about? The Saga 5 on the 3DS. Nobunaga Ambition on the 3DS. Romance, bro. Dragon Quest Heroes on the... Oh my God, bro. This dude, this dude, this dude, everything he's saying is thrown out the window at this point. Everything he's saying is out the window. Mario Kart, I said Mario Kart 8. The Splatoon 2 came out on the Wii U first, then it came out on the Switch. It was out on the Wii U for like six months before it came out on the Switch. ARMS, bro, ARMS, I think, yeah, I think ARMS is the only one because they had a Switch, uh, they had the Joy-Cons that came out with it. Pokemon is on the Wii, Pokemon is, Pokemon is a Wii U game, <laughs> bro. Oh my god, bro. <laughs> Splatoon is an underrated go. Bro, yes, yeah, like my my uh my friend has Splatoon. Like I played it with him. But this dude, one two switch is the oh <laughs> bro. And that's just, that ain't nothing but uh the fucking the Wii U party games turned into Switch games. But this dude is getting upset that the PS5 had cross gen titles when the switch did the same thing and i know i'm i'm saying the same thing over and over again 
but it does not like your his logic does not make sense he does not live in real life one if you could barely even count on a notable game to justify buying it which may end up being said every for game he showed was on the on the wii u bruh literally all the good games you did the switch had day and day is on the wii u donkey kong uh, Tropical Freeze is on a Wii U, and what's crazy, the Wii U so horribly, but all those games so phenomenal on the Switch because nobody liked the Wii U, nobody cared about the Wii U. The only games that's on the Wii U that's not on the Switch is Twilight Princess and fucking um, uh, uh, Wind Waker HD, and everybody said. Like, so many insiders, especially when the Legend of Zelda fucking anniversary thing was going on, they said that Nintendo made a fucking port of those two games on the Switch. They just never dropped them. And it's just like, how much you want to bet the Switch to? Bro, mark, mark my words. And people watching this video, remember this video. If the Switch 2 drop and Twilight Princess HD and Wind Waker HD... Or like day one releases on the Switch 2 along with uh Tears of the Kingdom and make it's a Switch 2 game. I guarantee you, like just watch and see. Those games been those games been ported to the Switch or on the Switch architecture. But they didn't they didn't release it because they wanted Skyward Sword to get new breath. Like, get a new, like, I love Skyward Sword. I was going to buy that shit regardless. But they want a Skyward Sword to sell really well on the Switch because the Switch just does that. Every game they did horrible on the Wii U, they port that shit to the Switch and gave it a new breath of life. Gave it a whole new life on the Switch. All those games on the Wii U, bro. Oh, my, bro. These current consoles, when all is said and done, yes, they are selling very well. But how much does that have to do with their actual quality and more with gaming as a hobby just becoming more widespread with each passing year? If they don't turn it around, what will the legacy of these systems be? Because right now it feels like it'll be two powerful bricks that barely had a thing of note to call their own. Why should I- Bro, what's the legacy of these systems, bro? These are the first systems that go toe-to-toe -to -toe with PCs, granted- Last generation could uh, handle P had handle games from the PC really well. The PC people didn't want us to live, but these consoles are doing what PCs can't like. Ray tracing, uh, like look at Final Fantasy 16. That game looks phenomenal, and it's a fully fledged ray trace game. Like every all the lighting in that game and shadows and stuff is a ray trace game. It's PCs out here. You can have a 20 series card, 30 series card, bro. Like you cannot run a get game on PC in native 4K with fucking ray trace reflections because you want to know why pc people want 60 fps all these frames above 60 and shit they never satisfy but guess what on consoles everything locked to 30 and 4k you got 4k 30 ray tracing and everything and people are like bro no the consoles are still underpowered no bro y'all are just picky bro y'all are picky and y'all are unsatisfied with shit being a PC gamer, I learned every time I was on PC, I just got to where, like, I'm tweaking shit. Tweaking shit because they got into my head that you need to run such and such frames and all this stuff. You don't need all that. Your eyes can only tell up to, what, 70 frames? And that's why 60 is perfect, bro. Anything above 60, you cannot tell that shit. That lat latency bullshit, you can't tell that shit. You cannot, your eyes cannot tell over that many frames you could sit they could sit you could sit here and tell me all this bs shit all this that and the third that you can tell and you special no you're not bro doctors and stuff have came out and said your eyes physically cannot tell the difference after like 70 to 80 frames like and not even that like i want to say it's 70 like 75 frames like 70 ish frames like your eyes cannot tell no more so you sitting there saying you can tell the difference with 144 frames and shit like that no the fuck you can't bro i played destiny at 144 frames and i cannot tell the difference from 144 the only difference i can tell is when i get to like 75 80 90 that's the only difference like after that that's it bro so all these pc gamers all they do is get on their pc and tweet 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 
and they don't fucking they tinker and they don't even enjoy games no more, bro. They want to see if their rig can play it, and if their rig can't play the newest game at, at, at uh, fucking two hundred frames a second, they get upset and they want to upgrade their shit. That's why they tell you about health hazards and games now. Exactly, dude. Like, bro, like PC gamers think all this, just so much crazy shit, and now they got gamers that be on consoles feeding into that stuff like people who get upset about games not running at 4k 60 bro a game developer if they target 30 frames per second at 4k resolution if they target that you can make a game tailored to 30 frames and it's fine like bro the action combat and final fantasy uh 16 and and devil may cry and shit because they targeted 30 30 frames it's a fluid fucking game bro you do not you can have 60 fps because the ps5 is powerful enough if you want to have 60 frames you cannot play at 4K and you can go 1440p or below and you lock it and you can have VR and all that extra shit. Yes, granted, sometimes, you know, you can drop frames and stuff and VR can fix it. But the PS5 is <laughs> way, a way capable system. All these people. And then, and then, and then there's certain games that do 4K 60. It's just a game developer. If you want ray tracing all this extra pretty fucking shit, you're going to have to like, Play your game in 30 FPS, but you can't have ray tracing all that stuff. Your eyes can't tell. Your eyes cannot tell, bro. Like if you want shit to be pretty and 60 FPS, I I get it. You may want that, but anything after 60, you can't fucking tell. Motherfuckers be close, close as hell to their screen trying to see that shit. Not there. Exactly, bro. Like, and then what's crazy, the only time they can tell if they record the game and then go back and watch it slow, bro. That's when they can tell. Like, like when you see, like, Digital Foundry and stuff do those tests and stuff, they're just testing, bro. But day by day, physically, your eyes, day by day playing a game, like, you can, like, you can play games at 60. And you can be stuck on that and play it nonstop at 60 to where, like, when you go back to 30, it messes your eyes up. But people who say 30 FPS like makes them sick is because they play at 60 too much and the game that they're playing at 30 is dropping. Like they're not locking the frames, they're not locking stuff. Like I can I get on my PC and I say I install like I got Destiny installed because I got 144 hertz. So I play my De I play Destiny at um 60 FPS on PC because my ps5 plays at 60 now but the ps5 plays destiny at 4k 60 you want to know why because there's no ray tracing stuff but certain companies there's their fucking shadows and stuff their baked shadows and baked lighting look so amazing that you can't even tell sometimes that shit's ray traced or not and that's a lot of stuff like fucking devil uh not devil bank cry um because devil bank cry got ray tracing what's the game that um that plays at 60 fps uh demon souls fucking from software not from software the people who remade it uh i forgot that company but because they tailored like uh, they wanted a 30 uh they wanted the 30 fps experience to be just as good as 60 fps experience they tailored it to 30 fps and it's phenomenal but because they don't have ray tracing and stuff they have it at 4k 60 and it's fluid as shit bro and it looked it like the fucking graphic fidelity looks like you would you think it's ray trace just because how good it looks bro and so these dudes out here getting into like pc heads and stuff like these dudes just like they be tripping bro they be fucking tripping and it's annoying and it's and in these consoles <laughs> this dude like bro he he gotta be a pc gamer bro he gotta be a pc gamer at this point like everything he's saying is fucking outrageous i believe the one and i know i done made this video long as hell i'm sorry uh people who watching this on youtube i know i done made this video long as hell with me ran but this dude is fucking tweaking with what he's saying bro Everything he's saying makes no sense. Has shown they understand the importance of release consistency, couldn't keep up with these two. 
I genuinely would not be shocked if the Switch 2 has a more complete library by its second year than the PS5 and Series X will have by their fourth or fifth. Bro, and the reason he said that is because Nintendo has characters that they gravitate to forever. Like, if the Switch 2 dropped with an F-Zero game, you know who's going to go crazy? F-Zero fans, because they've been wanting a fucking game forever. You know who just got a game? Metroid fans. You want to know why? Because they ain't got a game since the GameCube days. This dude, like, he's using Nintendo characters against Sony and them. Like, Sony didn't have that shit back in the day. That's what blew them up. Like, you mean to tell me niggas ain't went out here Crash Bandicoot fans? Y'all forget about Crash? Like, granted, Crash everywhere now. But Crash is like Sonic. You mean to tell me all these Sega boys didn't love Sonic, bro? They might not play Sonic. But when he was talking about Sega, you was rocking with Sonic just because he you was a Sega fanboy. Like this dude tweaking, like Nintendo made a plethora of characters to where they just got them locked in. You would never see Fire Emblem characters nowhere but on Nintendo. You never gonna see Pokemon nowhere but on Nintendo. You never gonna see more and they was smart with doing that. But the Switch 2 library is going to be the same thing as the Switch library. And they getting a lot. They just got red. they like, bro, like this dude, like you, a lot of third party companies are going to make stuff on the Switch 2 because people just going to gravitate to the Switch just because they, they're going to do that because of the Switch. And especially if Nintendo don't fuck it up and make it backwards compatible with the Switch, it's a wrap. You know how many niggas, like you mean to tell me? I ain't got to buy no games day one. I can just buy the Switch 2 and put in Pokemon Violet and that shit running flawlessly with no fucking dips. And I can see the shiny from a mile away. Like the draw distance is going to get updated. And I can see a shiny from a mile away on the game. And I can actually go run and catch it instead of like the little portion that you're getting now. Bro, this dude like, bro. He didn't got me heated now because you fought one company for something. Like you, you, you praising one company for characters. Like Sony ain't out here got the Aloy and Horizon, my uh fucking uh Kratos and his son now. The girl from Returnal, Xbox got the the chick from Hellblade, Master Chief, the whole Gears cast. Microsoft got Spider Man, and they and have Wolverine. They got Marvel on lock that. If you want a fire as Marvel game, it's dropping on PlayStation. Even though people sleep on fucking uh, Guardians of the Galaxy game. That game is phenomenal. I need to beat it on my back catalog. But this, bro, bro. There are still a good few years for them to turn their libraries around. And both do have promising works in the pipeline. But the sooner they get it in our hands, the better. I want to be wrong about this. I would be overjoyed if this video ages poorly three to four years from now and both of these consoles have stunning exclusive libraries that have people overjoyed about them. But right they now- They already have that. What world are you from? Given that we're past the three year mark with these systems, they do not have the library that they should have by this point. Again, if you want a comparison, if you were to pit the timelines of these systems together, by this point in its life cycle with the Switch, we would have been past Animal Crossing New Horizons right now. Which, anybody who knows that system's lineup, we had a boatload by that point. Can't be said for the other two. Again, I want them to turn this around, but I hope they do so sooner rather than later. What, what does he think that... Animal Crossing New Horizon came out during the pandemic, 2020, and the Switch had dropped in 20, 2017, right? Or 2016. The Switch dropped in 2017, 17, 18, 19, 20. So you had a bolo. So you saying that the Switch had more exclusives in its lifespan than the PS5 had right now? I probably, I can give you that, but that's because of Mario games and stuff. But if you want to flip it, the PlayStation still has a lot of exclusives, too. They just don't have the the Smash Brothers cast. You can't you can't go toe to toe with the Smash Brothers cast. That's like saying that's like getting mad at fucking Warner Brothers for the Disney characters. 
like Mickey Mouse and the gang is the gang. Like this, they're always gonna be there. Like nobody. That's the only reason Nintendo hasn't went under, hasn't sold as a company, is because of Mario and the gang. Like they're gonna always have that. They're gonna always have Pokemon. People are. It's people like me who only buy a Switch when they announce a Pokemon. Anything Nintendo when they announce a Pokemon game. Why did I get a Game Boy Advance? Because I wanted Pokemon Crystal. I didn't have a fucking Game Boy Color. And my daddy got me a Game Boy Advance and Pokemon Crystal on my birthday. Why did I fucking get GameCube? Because of fucking uh, Pokemon uh, College Town. It's people out here who just play Pokemon. It's people out here who just play Legend. The whole reason I bought a Wii is because Twilight Princess and fucking, no, Skyward Sword looked interesting. And then when I went to go buy my, and I didn't even get it. I, I, bro no no i'm lying i forgot it. that's that's my second week the first week i got is because of pokemon battle revolution i wanted battle revolution so bad that i got a fucking week when it came out because of battle revolution and then when i was going to college my girlfriend at the time gave me her old Wii, and because i said fucking uh i wanted to play uh skyward sword and so she just gave me her Wii, and i went about skyward sword and twilight princess ended up loving both of those things like it's people out here who just play legend of zelda and they're gonna always buy a nintendo product for legend of zelda and would never touch it ever since then nintendo has that power and they're gonna always do that and there's people out here who just gonna buy an xbox just because it's an xbox just because they had an xbox in the 2000s and they gonna always buy an xbox it don't matter what the fuck they play they just gonna buy xbox no matter what you say you can sit there and tell them god of war horizon all these spider-man all this shit is phenomenal they're gonna be like yeah that sound cool but i just like the way the xbox controller feel in my hand is that's it bro you got people like me who gonna buy a playstation no matter what this dude makes no sense bro like nintendo characters have like it reminds so many people of their childhood that it's just like you can't get upset and so and because of so many of them it's people out here who just buy smash brothers they buy every smash brothers so they're gonna buy the console when that smash brothers drop this dude is expecting something from game companies especially in today's time where times are changing and especially now that people won't shit on pc and shit why would you you like people don't take chances on new ips now i mean and that's what indie indie developers are coming in and i'm i'm glad like they're stepping up their game and that goes back to like epic making unreal engine uh um a uh, easy accessible uh program to make games in now but this dude is wanting something that like should have been established let's just take this like why you think Sony ain't getting rid of Ratchet and Clank? Because that's their fucking catch you later, homie. It was great chatting with you. All right, bro, take it easy, man. Appreciate you just stopping by. Uh, make a follow. I stream down there every day, and uh, I'm here chilling. I uh, hopefully you can catch me play the game later. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate you. But uh, this dude, that's why Sony uh ain't. That, that's why Sony's not getting rid of Ratchet and Clank because that's like their mascot now. Ratchet and Clank and Astro Boy. Like, Sony should have kept all of their mascots and we would have that now. But they still can do that. Like, if Sony make a new Sly Cooper, like, what he's won is like the mascot stuff. I, I'm guessing. But. I don't know, bro. I done made this video long enough. I'm sorry, y'all. Let I'd it. rather not finally feel like I got my Let's money's worth saying. from my PS5 when the PS6 is just around the corner. Let's pick it up, you two. Clock's ticking. Yeah, no, nah, I done made this uh, video long enough. But, uh, yeah, this dude, he, I don't know what he's wanting um, from game companies, but, like, he lives in a bubble for real but uh uh you know i'm finna just end it like comment subscribe do all that stuff appreciate that